because I remember in May, in April, May, I was feeling so much pressure from school, college, getting into college, right. and obviously applying. I didn't really upload it the month of May because I just thought, man, I don't know if YouTube's for me. It's like, there's so much work. And so I just tossed a video out and this video still got 12K views even after a month I did not upload. And everyone was like, oh my God, Chompy's <laughs> back. He's back uploading and all that kind of stuff. It, I was really yeah. like moved. Hey everyone, welcome to the Skill Link Podcast, where we chat and get to know passionate content creators, competitive players, and all voices who continue to make the Pokemon community incredible. And today's guest, of course, is no exception. He is a resident expert on Pokemon singles. He is one of the go-to sources for all things relevant in the current metagame. What's good? What isn't? How should I use this new form? What's the deal with the newest bands and so on? You want the breakdown? He's your guy. It's our Fue Coco friend, Chompy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I feel so honored. That was powerful. <laughs> that was powerful. <laughs> Thanks, man. No, I mean, you're the one bringing the power. So, uh, no, that, that we appreciate that as well. I got to tell you, yeah. bro. So, I, what caught me, uh, my eye, first and foremost, I love I love your logo. I love your mascot. Just Fue Coco, I think it was probably one of the most perfect design Pokemon in this new generation. And I, I think your logo is just beautifully like d done. So it caught my cool. eye and I was like, Hey, we got to get this guy on first and <laughs> foremost, just because of Chompy. <laughs> the funny thing is I actually tried the first thing I started with this channel because it all, when I first started this channel, I think last year in July, I was just like goofing around. I was bored during my junior year of high school. And I was like, okay, well at the end of my junior year, I was like, okay, let me just see what I want to do. I'm just bored. Mm -hmm. And I actually put a crocodile mascot in the beginning because crocodile is one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, funny enough, I was trying to post some stuff on Facebook and they banned me for self-promoting or whatever. Oh, so, no way. I got, <laughs> so I got rid of the crocodile thing so no one will know it's me and replaced it with the Fue Coco because I love Fue Coco and I thought yeah, it was yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's that's awesome. awesome. I love it, bro. That's great. Getting into, you know, um, our first section here, we want to get to know you a little bit outside the Pokemon sphere. Um, so, uh, kind of, you know, what other interests and hobbies take up your time besides Pokemon? Uh, you know, what other things are you into shows, TV? We're just curious. Yeah. So, um, at least in my college right now, I, I was part of like, of like a Diwali festival show where I would be cool. dancing and actually I did oh, not nice. know how to dance, but I learned <laughs> in the past two months how to dance. So that was something interesting. Um, I love playing basketball sports, especially I'm a huge sports nice. fan. I love basketball football i used to pay attention to a lot of baseball but i don't really do that and then um in my free time i sometimes try, like to think of or have ideas of like sometimes i like to draw of like um potential manga ideas i would ever have if i were as an artist or stuff Ooh, because it. i just have a ton of ideas when i watch manga like i don't know if you guys are into it but especially like jjk right now like oh, that's yeah. huge like i feel bad for the animators but it still turns out really good so like i mean i'm not complaining but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, obviously um, i spent time with friends and stuff so right super cool bro i've i've been really digging um jjk right now um my wife and i have recently um spy family's back on so we really like spy family i want to really um, get back into that yeah oh it's so good man spy family so much fun and then um what's another one we actually finished this one up that's recent it's kind of a smaller one it's called moriarty the patriot um, so it's kind of a, if you've seen like, um, Death Note before, it's kind of Death mm -hmm. Note vibes in some ways, but it's, it's really fun. It kind of follows James Moriarty. So like the, the arch rival to Sherlock Holmes and like his story from an anime point of view, it's really cool, but so, yeah, no, no totally, actually, totally in anime and stuff too. Not to go totally off script, but like, what's your like favorite anime if I just curious? Ooh, that's a hard question. I think for me, honestly, if I were to say... My Hero Academia really brought me into the sphere a lot more. Um, and, but I actually really think if I were to say like, so uh, favorite's a hard word, but I think one of my most favorites, like the best paced anime I've ever watched so far is Blue Lock. Have you ever seen Blue Lock before? Um, I heard about Blue Lock, but it's a sports anime. I just don't know if it's going to be living up to like the cringe I, or like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's amazing. Like I, I, th I, I kind of started watching it. Not I, I, same deal, right? Sports anime. I was kind of like, okay, we'll see what this is all about, kind of deal, right? But the pacing in that show, I don't know if what it is exactly, but 
like you know how in some anime like you feel like 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 you watch an episode and you're like nothing happened that episode really like it was good but nothing happened right like it was like I right, didn't right, yeah. I didn't get anything new they did they didn't give me enough to really feel satisfied with Blue mm. Lock what's amazing what I love is you you get through like you get to the the middle section but you're like there's so much happened in that first section that I I always thought oh the, it's over they, they got to be going to credits right now but then you have another ten minutes of the show. And so it's like it just always gives you really good good stuff every episode. Dude, everyone's so, been telling me that anime is so good. I'm just been like downshining, like no, it's sports. It's I sports refuse fun. to watch it. But, I, I I think you'll like it, bro. Just give it give it a shot. Give it a couple episodes. Let me know. But because uh, obviously, obviously, teach their own. If you don't like it, no worries. But I I really really have enjoyed Blue Lock a lot recently, and it's it's yeah. definitely up there. It's, it's just kind of a really nice one to slip into. Josh, do you got one or like? Uh, I so I've recently gotten a little more into it because of my brother in law. Um, so for right. me, like right now, the one that I've watched all the way through is just the classic AOT. I mean, Attack on Titan was kind of like a Dude. really good entry point because I mean, the, yeah. first, the first episode just gets you right away. And I'm like, I mean, the, the last time I can remember feeling, I, I remember feeling that way was watching Game of Thrones. I'm a huge mm-hmm. Game of Thrones mm-hmm. guy, and of course, right. you know, for those who have seen it, first episode leaves you on a pretty pretty big cliffhanger that makes you want to know what happens next. And it was the same way with Attack on Titan. So, uh, so funny enough, Logan actually will 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 slip me some suggestions here and there, and he's like, "Hey, man, you got to check this out, check that out." So, um, Yo, yeah, I don't know how far you went to AOT, but I'm telling you right now, season three hits, bro. Your mind's gonna be blown. That it's incredible. I'm almost there. I'm I'm about to wrap up season two, and uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, my, my brother in law, he like he's. Yeah, he's hyping me up on it, and uh, no, but yeah. In addition to that, I mean, I'm also big into sports, not just you know baseball and wearing a Red Sox shirt, but you know, I love basketball and football. Like this time of year, uh, I'll toss on some NBA games, hang out with my wife, Are you and then. A Jets fan? Uh, I'm actually a Steelers fan, so I have kind of an interesting sports background because my dad grew up in Boston, hence the Red Sox. I like the Celtics as well, right. but um, they moved around a lot growing up. They lived in Texas for a while, so my grandpa likes the Cowboys. But when my dad and his brother were kids, despite my my grandpa, they were Steelers fans because Steelers and Cowboys, you know, were big rivals back in the day. So uh, <laughs> that's that's where that came from. And then uh, so I kind of have a weird sports uh, fan. You I know, guess fan, you know, but it's all over. It's okay, Josh. I forgive you. At least you're not a Cowboys fan. So. I know, right? I was gonna say as long as I'm a Cow- I think everyone universally says that. And for anyone who's a Cowboys fan out there, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I think for the most part, everyone can uh, can agree with that. But um. No, yeah, yeah. I, I guess kind of segueing into that, obviously, you know, um, a lot of big games on this time of year and, you know, a lot of other stuff happening, uh, you know, as we get to the end of the year. As far as like Thanksgiving, any holidays, do you have any, you know, favorite traditions uh, this time of year? <laughs> Usually, so like me and my friends, like we started this tradition like all the way back in think like middle school. Yeah, like I think like seventh grade. And like what we would do is... Thanksgiving that day, we would meet with our own individual families, would have like a get together and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening, we would get together for like a big sleepover and we would have a like, Friendsgiving where we would meet nice. and then like have a good time. Like that's been running on for years. I don't know if we're doing it this year because like we're all in college and have our own things, but like, like that's been a fun tradition usually every year. That's, that's awesome, fun. man. Yeah, yeah, when, uh, I was, uh, when I was in college. I was going to say, yeah, we did the same thing when I was in college. Um, you know, before I, before I met my wife, we would, uh, just my roommates and a couple other people get together around Thanksgiving. We weren't close to family, um, distance wise. So it, it makes, makes for a fun time. Just get some buddies together and, and hang out. So that's cool. Yeah, that's definitely. Food. I was just going to ask what your uh, favorite food is for Thanksgiving or, or holiday season time. Just curious, you know, favorite food. Hmm. I don't know. Every year it kind of switches. So like I'm vegetarian, so I've never like eaten turkey, but like, um sometimes we have like like mac and cheese or like at least in my instance like i'm indian so i, have, I don't know if you guys know like something called paneer so yeah, like yeah. that's all that, yeah, yeah paneer always hits so that's what i usually have nice is that re- remind me is that like the I, we just went to i went to my company did a, a diwali party recently is, it, is that bread it was paneer it, it's like a cottage cheese mm-hmm. like it like square oh, okay like a blocks basically you'd be having it like gravy okay. Ooh, it's really that good. Sounds really good. That sounds yeah, really good. Oh, I love it, bro. That's fun. Thanks for you know, kind of giving us. You, know, little... you should give it a try one day. I, I promise you, you will love it. I'll have to look into it, dude. I, I, we, like I said, we, we did um, like a Diwali party uh, um last weekend, and it was incredible. Like I, it was such a fun vibe, and um, the food was fantastic. So I definitely gotta gotta try try some more out there. So I'm excited. So 
But thanks for uh, kind of giving us a peek behind the curtain there into your personal personal fun there. Uh, but now, yeah, of course, of course, kind of getting into your you know Pokemon side of things. We're just wondering, you know, how did you get into Pokemon? What's your first game, and then you know who's what's your favorite game or favorite Pokemon? Well, okay, so this is I think back in twenty. 10 2011 is when i okay it was basically when i was in first grade and i had a friend i had two friends that were into pokemon i really never understood the premise of it at that time i was like okay whatever it's <laughs> yeah, just right. pokemon like well, yeah it's just monsters like what are these and they i think i think like near the end of first grade second grade they like got this game called pokemon black and white or pokemon black and white and two i forgot which version but it's it basically gen 5 games and mm -hmm. they were playing it and i couldn't really understand the context but they always told me you'll pick a side like who do you think is gonna win clang clang or crocodile or like whatever right they're arguing their own things and then so it was around the time of my birthday i think late december and i was like or like early december and i was like they, some movie was playing i think it was like the kira movie kira and oh, i was yeah, like yeah 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 so i was like all right you know what let me just watch this let's just see what it's about the first thing i saw was kira and keldeo fighting and i just fell in love I was yeah like, oh my dude. god this is so cool <laughs> and funny enough I saw kirim first i think kirim is one of the best looking pokemon i don't care what people say like that is I sick agree. but keldeo God, you know, when that Resolute form comes on the screen, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It was, I loved Keldo. Keldo was my favorite Pokemon by far. Oh, like, nice. I wish I could make, it, like, I wish I could make it my channel mascot. I just don't have any cool names for it. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, I, I guess I could tell that later, but it, well, about, about my first channel that I did. But yeah, Keldo and Kira, like, they were definitely my favorites. And ever since then, like, I was so into Pokemon. Uh, I will follow up. I, every year, I would always ask, like, can I get a DS from my parents and stuff? They were like, you have to earn it. You have to get the money. And then I started getting allowance in third grade. And I was like, okay, I can start earning money. And funny enough, I had a dollar from before. And I thought a dollar at that time was $100. So, like, I deposited <laughs> yep. in, in, like, my little allowance because I like, Dad, I got a hundred bucks. Can I buy a DS? He's like, that's a dollar. That's not a hundred bucks. I was like, close. oh, he's like, do you see the decimal point? It's one dot zero zero, not one zero zero dot. I was like, ah. Yeah. So oh, I saved enough money. I think around middle school, sixth grade, I finally bought my first two DS and I bought Pokemon Sun and Moon. Nice. Up until this point, my friends used to battle all the time in Oras, and I used to be so fond of it. So I was like, okay, I finally got my own game. And then my me and my I think I had a brown 200 300 hours non-stop me and my friend we would make pokemon we didn't know how to do evs or ivs that much but we would yeah. make pokemon train pokemon to 1100 give all these special moves he would find out a way to get egg moves and i'll be like oh shoot like, and so then we started learning about <laughs> evs later and we would start battling every weekend every because he went to a different middle school than i so every time we were, he was done he'd come to my house we'd play non-stop for eight hours just battling battling yeah. battling sometimes we would do shiny hunting as well it was a very fun time this led on from like sixth to like eighth grade where we constant like just fun and ever since then i've been in love with the si like singles it was singles is always the most fun tier in my opinion like i love oh, yeah. dc but nothing hits more than a good 30 minute 40 minute satisfying singles <laughs> yeah, battle yeah. where you win at the end it's so good it sucks they got rid of the 60 minute timer i really wish that was back because ever since the 60 minute timer came in in like sword and shield yeah it just mm -hmm. killed singles for my friend oh, yeah. group and we've never been able to play ever again so it's yeah. tough yeah right now we're uh logan and i we're uh we're in a draft league with some other friends that we've uh met over the years and we've probably we, we did one oh, nice. season where we did double it's just it's super casual so we kind of like homebrew our own rules and everything mm -hmm. uh own right, formats, right, right. but uh for the most part, I mean, yeah, we just do singles. And, I mean, the, the battles get super intense. Um, during the season, I mean, we just try and do them once a week. And, uh, you know, I'll have to set aside. I, could, I know my match is a Wednesday night. I know I have to clear my plans for that Wednesday because I know the match. Is, it's like a best of three. Right, right, right. And I know yep. the best of three is going to take, like, an hour at least, you know, if, yep. if, if we're, ta if we're uh, moving pretty quickly. But, you know, if you get a W, it, it, it hits different. But, no, it's cool to hear about your background on that and, uh, you know, how you got into it. I think a lot of people fell in love with Pokemon in a similar way where you kind of slowly get introduced to it and then what's so cool about it, and i think yeah. the reason it's so it's so lasting even after all these years and even though it's so formulaic is that you can get super deep and super detailed and nitty-gritty with it or you can be as casual as you want with it like you kind of mm -hmm. open the door exactly. you can do these casual vanilla playthroughs you don't even have to touch anything remotely competitive like i like for example like I, you know i've been in pokemon as you know for the last 20 years or whatever but um, I didn't know anything about EVs or IVs or really understand them until like the last like you know five or six years, and it's like yeah. whoa, there's like this whole other side to it, and then it just it pulls uh -huh. you in even more. So that's cool. 
I think that's what made it so cool. I think one person that's definitely helped. I know he's like an older guy in the community now because damn, it's been so long. I feel so old now to even think about it. But Shady <laughs> Penguin, like his oh, yeah, yeah. Wi Fi battle back yep. in the day, dude, those battles were so sad. And me and my friends always try to recreate it and like long Wi Fi battles. People always complain, man, the singles they take so long. But bro, they don't understand the feeling when you hit, when you get them at the twenty minute mark after that long, satisfying, <laughs> stall worthy battle when they Heck just toss yeah. it on a Moongus or like anything, and it's just like, finally, bro, that win. You just get talk trash, like man, it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun, man. And like the thing, I mean, so me, me and Josh just recently played, um, actually mm-hmm. in our draft league, right? And, and and the thing is, I have Walking Wake. He had um my my team like needed walking away to be josh and so it's it's so fun when like because because like vgc like and, we, and, we, and we'll probably get into this a little bit later too but vgc definitely quicker games definitely you know different di- different game altogether right but with with a single something that i i was just sitting there josh and i talked about this afterward is that he was like if i can get rid of walking wake i can i can beat him and I was like, if I lose Walking Wake, I lose, you know. <laughs> and so, and so the thing is, it's like this interesting game of chess where we're both trying to like mind game each other, and it's just like it, it just makes it so where each piece is just so important. And like, ah, yeah. it, it was and just then, one of those yeah. things where where we like we you can use all six in your mons to really really build up a full strategy, and ugh, it was it was amazing. It was such a fun match, and I just I agree with you. I think it was fun, dude. those types of battles are really where it hits, man. Those types of battles are like damn. I know. Yeah, it's it's like yeah. This is why I do this, man. It's 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 the best. So honestly yeah I do, there's nothing better than singles man like bring back the 60 minute timer just <laughs> yeah. it. it's not that hard like how hard is that oh it's so fun it's so fun all right now getting into um most recently into your content itself right um we right. know that uh sneezler is joined the party right and it's a nasty mod <laughs> it's got you know, it's it just easily fits into the meta, and it's finally been axed now in in you know Smogon and in, in, in different formats and things. So, give us a breakdown on Sneasler and your thoughts on it. I'm just kind of curious on you know your, your with the current meta, what's going on, and what your thoughts are on Sneasler. Well, honestly, if I'm not speaking from an objective point of view, which I try to do in most of my videos, I honestly think Sneezer was one of the most fun Pokemon I've ever played with in <laughs> singles ever. Yeah. dude, I was. If low key, I want that thing in singles, man. People were complaining on the forums, but man, bro, when it got unburdened sword stance, that defense boost in grassy terrain, bro, just click dire claw. People go to sleep. Well, it is what it is. It's the game. It's not my control. It's, it's, it's in it. Sleep. It's in it, right? I I kind of love. I first of all, like I I don't know when season was first introduced. Like I think we all kind of thought this thing was, looks interesting, right? Like we were like, this is kind of a weird one. Yeah. But uh, but honestly, like dire claw is just such a fun move, dude. And what were they what were they smoking over there when they made dire claw 50 percent chance the status like what like, uh, what, what are we doing I, I, I have i have no idea i mean on one hand they made a great hisuian pokemon and sneezer yeah. on the other hand they took another amazing looking design and hisuian avalog and absolutely just made them even more garbage so i don't yeah. know what they're thinking throughout this <laughs> entire know. process but sneezler i don't know why they added that random i thought like poison paralysis yeah sure like whatever like yeah it, people are going to complain but just suck it up but, like sleep i thought that was a bit insane for especially on like an 80 base power move like yeah. that that's a bit too much 100 percent. like i i definitely could see the balancing there where it's just poison and paralysis um and maybe make it like 30 like because it's, it's try attack 30 percent is that right with all the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I, I would say do that um but yeah no sleep i actually personally think and this is probably a weird opinion but i kind of think sleep should be more like the drowsy that was in the history the the legends games I actually, dude that's what i'm saying yeah i, I kind of liked that a lot because then like rest became so much more viable um like it was such an like i i, I still go, go back and play legends sometimes and i have an umbreon yeah. there with rest and it was just like uh, the, umbreon the thing was is like that. yeah the thing is though like they included Snow that was from Legends Arceus, and that was a fantastic change yeah. to Ice Type Pokemon. Hence, like, Bax Calibur just got banned to Ubers as soon as Teal Mass DLC released because yeah. it got Scale Shot, and it was just broken. But 
it didn't put Drowsy or like Frostbite. Frostbite would be huge for special attackers. Mm-hmm. They don't have any significant nerfs. And that's why special attackers went always better than physical attackers. Because you can't half their attack side or whatever. Yeah. Physical attackers, you can burn them and just chip them away. Yeah. And I thought those two would have been fantastic additions. Especially since Sleep is such an... Such, it's so RNG, in my opinion, Pokemon battle. Like, yeah, it's fun to cheese. You get a spore off with the Moongus or whatever. Yeah, yeah, ha, ha, ha. Like, <laughs> the opponent's sleeping. He can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, Smog can put up a Claws. But, Thank goodness. Like, I think... Drowsy would have been more, I think, like competitive viable, I guess, in that kind yeah. of aspect. It would have been better. I definitely want somebody to make, out there to make like a showdown mod or something like that where it's got Drowsy and Frostbite. I think that would be very, very fun. I think maybe, maybe, uh, there's another, there's a Radical Red showdown, but they probably don't have Drowsy. I think they just have, uh, Frostbite on there, but I think that'd be really fun. I think it'd be really cool to look at, like, if somebody ever did that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping soon they implement that. Hopefully in Generation 10 in like two years or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think they they are making strides. It's it's, it's just it, for, to me it's funny when I see, um, you know, every generation there's a whole wave of people complaining and critiquing this or that. But I genuinely feel like they are, you know, as far as like mm-hmm. battle and actual gameplay goes, as well as like other gimmicks. I, they're they're obvious in like design wise with actual Pokemon. They're clearly trying stuff, and I, I you know some stuff isn't going to hit. Not every idea is going to be a a grand slam knock out of the park, but uh, Z moves. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny we uh a few weeks ago for one of our uh one of our shower thoughts we were talking with someone else he's a he's a vgc pro and we asked him what his favorite gimmick was and we said we're like do you like mega dynamax or terra and he's like oh we're not even mentioning z moves are we we're like oh yeah we forgot about, we forgot about the crystals. <laughs> I totally, um, I totally we, sp- we spaced it completely and it's funny because you know in our, in our draft league too uh, you know it's, it's just we do nat dex ubers and uh you know so you can bring right. megas you can bring anything and out of all the gimmicks from the last few gen, we don't do Dynamax though. But out of all the gimmicks, you know, everyone right. Terra's, everyone brings Megas. But I think I've only seen a small handful of guys break out the Z move because if you get, <sighs> if your Z move gets stuffed, then that Pokemon's mm-hmm. held item is just gone, and it's you know it's it's a it's, it's also hard. kind of embarrassing to get your Z move stuffed. But um, yeah, <laughs> also, it was just like a one hit OP move where oh, yeah. someone just can just like it's a it's a spray and pray basically. Yeah. Like, oh well, here we go. It's I'm going to hope yeah. it's an Oko. Yeah, yeah, high variance. yeah, yeah, for sure. Also, like. On what you said about, like, Pokemon, I think why people are complaining a bit is because they're, like, the largest grossing franchise. And if we have to wait four years just for one small change, That's true. like, That's and true. you hear everyone on the forum, like, on forums and everyone complaining. Like, Pokemon opened up their own forums back in July over the summer. Like, people are probably going to be complaining over there. Like, if you don't see that and read that, like, at one point, like, people are going to be frustrated. You're 25, 30 years in almost. Yeah. Like, that's that's old but 30 years top grossing <laughs> franchise and we're still at this process fortnite that which has been released in 2017 they listen to their player best probably there. not as much as they used to be right but they listen much better than pokemon does which like kind of frustrates a lot of people because 60 minute timer that's not that hard of a change yeah. frostbite not that hard of a change drowsy not that hard of a change why do why do we just make mega weevil out of nowhere like what's going on we nerfed weevil for no reason like what's going like it's just those like simple it's like irritating to a lot of people which i feel for that's fair like especially like bdsp when they that god awful remake who in game freak was in charge of that that was awful that makes hurt, me sad, man. man. BDSP hurt. hurt. But it's true. We, no, I mean, like, another thing Logan and I do a lot of is we do, um, you know, a, a, aside from these interviews is we'll do, uh, like, soul links of, of ROM hacks out there. It's just, it's crazy how a ROM hack right. will do a certain generation or a spin on a certain game. Mm-hmm. Like, quality of life features, uh, Pokemon available, battle exactly. mechanics. And we're like, dude, like, this is like, <laughs> this is like insane. It's like literally a perfect game. And, uh, no, even though, like, for example, there's a lot of stuff in Scarlet and Violet that I like that are quality of life features. I'm like, this is stuff they should have brought in in like Gen six or Gen five or something. I don't know why it took them nine gens to, you know, or like it. for example, like uh, EVs. I guess you know, competitive battling has changed a lot over the years. But I'm like, Gen eight, and we can finally do perfect IVs with the bottle caps. I'm like, it took us that long to to like but easily see, craft competitive we, Pokemon. Right, right, right. But like the thing is, we're like applauding them for finally hitting the tip of the iceberg. I, know. I think, in my opinion, the bigger things to tackle, which which is why people hack in Pokemon, is because Eevee and Ivy training, who wants to spend their entire 24 hours of their life Eevee and Ivy training just to realize, oh, shoot, wait, I'm going to go change the Eevees or Ivies. Yeah. I think they should include, like, in a much easier way, it's like a five-minute thing. Like, at the end of the day, who cares, man? It's about the skill, not about, like, training them yeah, up. I agree. And two, I think we should also include a bottle cap where we reduce the Ivy down to zero. Yep. Like, are you serious? Soft resetting for just to get, a, <laughs> like, a zero IV or close to that, yeah. especially for VGC players, because I know Trick Room's more viable yeah. there. Like, I feel for them, too. Like, I, like come on, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. 100%. 100%. Um, 
so moving into uh, another book. So obviously Sneasler, that's a, you know, you know, you talked about that. Jimothy cool made a big video on Sneasler as well. I actually just got done watching that earlier today. Um, another Pokemon that's yeah. been in the news lately, as far as the meta goes is um, Gliscor, of course, which is pretty crazy because uh, it's a defensive mod. Usually you see like these mm-hmm. hyper offensive, incredibly powerful mods that you don't really have an answer for get axed. But here we have Gliscor, which, um, you know, just, recently got cut out as well um you know, tell us some more of your thoughts on gliscor i know you said you were a fan of sneezler what, what are your uh what are your thoughts on the old vampire boy well i made a lot of thoughts and i think people took it the wrong way on my video and i even got contact with the ou council <laughs> like why are, like what's going on probably should have clarified some stuff and to be fair uh, finch was right I, I probably should have <laughs> yeah I, I i should have clarified a bit of more things and rather than assuming people know but I'm not mad at the fact that the community... I'm not... No, sorry. I'm not mad at the fact that Smog on banned Gliscor. They're just doing their job. The community voted for Gliscor to be gone. I'm a bit, like, questionable. Why? We've been complaining about Goldango and King Gambit. King Gambit, I'll, it's not really the problem here, but, but especially Goldango since the start of Generation 9. Yeah. Basically a year yeah. from now, right? A year and some days. And we've been saying the Hazard metagame is all in trouble, all because of this. Corviknight's useless. It's just in the stuck between where it can do not do anything in OU, but it's too good to be in UU. So it's always just in OU doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So it can't use the fog because good as gold is there. Rapidspin is basically negated because you got a ton of viable ghost types like Dragapult and obviously Gold Dango. Right. So then what Like, what are you going to do about it? In Gliscor, I think in my opinion, at least at least from someone who covers singles, my, my opinion, Gliscor is good because it was able to take advantage of the circumstances that was around it. It was a product of the environment yeah. that was around it. It wasn't more so it was OP by itself, which is why I don't think, which is why you don't really see support Pokemon being banned in the first place because they're a product of the environment around yeah. it. Yeah. So I, to blame Gliscor for that, I think that was a bit premature. I wish as a community we voted on Goldango because then it would have been interesting to see how OP Gliscor would have been because we would have had to fog back and rapid spin. Two key moves that have basically been non-existent the entire generation, except for Great Tusk. Yeah, yeah. And Great Tusk has been the glue piece for every Pokemon. So I think it was a bit premature. And I think I wish as a community we did something better. So, that, that's yeah. such a good point, though. Like, it seems like, I mean, like the, the culprit really wasn't Gliscor. It was more the like, like you were mentioning Goldengo and, and things like that. And so, but Gliscor got, got the the brunt of the brunt of the, the, the rage because it was answering those those issues. And so, and like, and like, think about it. Like, Ribombi. Oh, sorry, not to cut you off, but like, oh, Ribombi. Like, Ribombi is good. Ribombi is like the eighth most used Pokemon Dude, it's in crazy. Ubers, and like one of the top most Pokemon used in OU, literally because of sticky webs and our favorite Steel Boy, like Cheese String Man, Goldango with good as gold. Yeah, yeah. that's it's literally crazy. why it's relevant. It's always been like an RU or like PU. No one cares about it's this so thing. Random, how easy dude. it is to get rid of sticky I'm webs. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, exactly. Josh. Josh has a. We have a question later on for for you with Ribombi too. So we'll, we'll keep talking about it. But I forgot that was even a Pokemon until today. I was like, oh yeah. Rib- Bomb is a thing. <laughs> it's literally just fast bro, webs. I didn't, <laughs> bro, I, you know, when it was an OU, I was like, okay, yeah, obviously go dang. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. People just want to abuse it over upon heart. But when I saw the user stats for November and that thing was an Ubers, I was like, man, that's how you know here? Pokemon created too good, too good of a Pokemon go dang, go, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of speaking of that, kind of getting, you know, speaking of Glide Score, speaking of this power creep that's been happening, you know, what are some other mods that you've kind of personally enjoyed using and that what others do you think have what kind of withstood that power creep that have, you know that's been happening over the last little bit? Well, at least in Generation 9, I, I usually just try to use Pokemon from OU, primarily because I just like to see what's happening in the metagame, so then I obviously can make videos on right. it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think my favorite combo by far was Sneezer and Rillaboom. That was Dude, an absolute cheese. OP, I love using OP it. Duo. Other favorites, it was an OP duo. I think other favorites, especially early on in August, I loved using Chili Reception and Bax Calibur. Oh, yeah. Chili Reception combo with Bax Calibur from Glow King. Because you get Ice Body, then you set a substitute, then you go for Dragon Dance, and you pretty much just call it yeah. from there. Like, it is what it is. No one's going to stop Bax Calibur from there. It's going to be snowballing. <laughs> Roaring Moon was a good one. I loved using the regular Urs- Ursa Luna on release. Not Blood Moon, but regular. Yeah. But until people figured out how easy it was counter because McGearn was out there and stuff like that, it started to become a bit boring. Blood Moon Ursa was a good one. I hated on it because I didn't think Ground and Normal would be able to hold up, especially since his defenses were weaker and his offenses were a bit weaker. Mm-hmm. But it surprisingly held up and was Ubers. So, yeah, there goes that. I started using it in midway, so that was fun to use. 
I, I like using mostly I like making Pokemon that are like, I like to make unorthodox Pokemon that good. It's fun. Like, yeah. It's it's fun to like like challenge the way someone thinks about a certain Pokemon. Like for example, I think I remember where was it? Well, either in Teal Mask or something like that. I know people were using Gliscor for more a defensive approach, but then you could also use it like offensively. Mm-hmm. I know Facade has been popular before, but now you got Terra Normal Facade, yeah. right? You, even with Great Tusk, when it used to be more defensive back in the day, a lot of people still run offensive, and you could run that and change the Terra type of it, you know? Or I know I used to run Physical Dragapult, which was pretty huge, I think, like last year or like this year, right? I used to use, run Physical Dragapult. Usually people run as a special or like a mixed set or like a support set usually. Yeah. And that's usually the main sets. You don't really see Physical. But I run Physical and I actually surprised a couple of teams. I, Well, I mean, I didn't really go that high because I eventually like it was kind of predictable. But like it, Choice Bandit, like Dragon Dart still did a number. And can, like Terra goes to do Phantom Force mm-hmm. or Terra goes to do like Terra Blast. Sorry, Terra Blast, Terra goes because at the time it didn't have anything. So... I think like finding those cool niches between Pokemon, I think it makes it. I think it makes the game more challenging yeah. and it's just more fun for me personally. Definitely. Um, and it kind of speaking of that, you were mentioning Teal Mask. Um, speaking of the next DLC, uh, some new info. Just pulling that up. Some new info dropped on Indigo Disc today that has me pretty excited, even just from a casual standpoint. I know uh, they were. Um, Sarah B did an article where they had some guys play through it a little bit and talking about how. I guess this caters more to the to the VGC audience, but a lot of the battles are going to be two v two in the Indigo Disc. Uh, as far as mm. the story goes, a lot of the AI are actually going to have competitive sets, which is pretty cool. But um, as far as from like a casual playthrough standpoint, and even even what it's going to mean for uh, for the singles meta specifically OU, what are you excited for in the new DLC? I'm really excited for actually. Just the content and just obviously more Paradox Pokemon. Yeah, and yeah. I just like the new Pokemon in general, just like their stats and stuff like that. I'm always like a stat geek. I love looking at the Pokemon stats yeah, and stuff. Yeah, same. I think also I'm excited to see like their shinies, like if they're cool or not. Oh, like, yeah, dude. I'm also a sucker for shinies. Oh, yeah. So like that would be cool to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm also kind of excited to see how the Blueberry Academy is kind of like the direction they're going to go. I know Teal Mask, like it was a, a little story about Ogopon, how it was basically just abused and used and then people risked mm-hmm. back and all that kind of stuff. Um, not to sound too harsh on it, but so I'm kind of wondering in Indigo Dis, uh, and I, especially with the the main character, I forgot his name, but like how he, he was going through something and now we're going to find out in the Indigo Disc, like um, what's next with him, like what's going on. So I'm actually kind of curious because especially the normal story, the base story, the way the ending went was surprisingly good. Mm-hmm. I love the Paldea story, especially at the end. That twist oh, yeah. where the professor was a robot. I was playing this game two in the morning and I was like, huh? Yeah. And same. I was creeped out. I was same. like, oh my God, what am I playing right now? Like, like what? Yeah. Like it was insane. And I, I'm wondering if they're going to do that with the Blueberry Academy because I don't know if they're releasing any more DLC or not. Although the speculations they will be, but just as a curiosity, I mm-hmm. wonder if there's going to be some major t- plot twist. Like Pokemon, at least in this generation, have been taking their story a bit oh, yeah. more seriously yeah. than the past couple of generations because God knows Sword and Shield was awful. So it's kind of cool to yeah. see. No, I agree, man. The, the um, yeah, the main story for uh, um, for Scarlet and Violet with that twist at the end. I know it got me. I, I heard people saying, like, just out there in the ether that it was a crazy ending while it was, you know, in the, the first few weeks of being out. And I was like, I gotta mm-hmm. stay away from spoilers. And uh, it, it got me, even though I was kind of expecting something big. I didn't expect that. And then on top of that, you had, um, you know, some really good psych. I mean, I, I really liked Arvin's story, even though mm-hmm. maybe it's a little cliche with, like, you know, he's on the quest to, like, heal his, yeah. his beloved Pokemon, his pet. I have two. Dude, his story went so dark. Dude, I, so I, I have two dogs and a cat. So I'm I'm super sentimental with animals anyways. So when he's like, you know, Arvin yeah. seems kind of like, you know, a little rude or show off at first, but then you kind of get into the underlying intentions and motivations of where he's coming from. And like his, uh, his Mabistiff is clearly sick. I'm like, Man, I can't be doing this. My dogs aren't even that old yet, and it's got me sad. And everything, so. yeah. But uh, no, I, yeah, I'm hyped. Same. I, I'm excited to see what they they whip out with with the Indigo Disc. And from what I'm hearing and the vibes I'm picking up, I think we're gonna get a, get a banger of a DLC. So, um, definitely excited. Yeah. I hope so. And yeah, just to touch upon like the base game, like the eerie music in like the Area Zero. It is good. And the, I don't know how Arnold recovered from that traumatizing. The fact that your dad was a and robot or he time, was dead yeah. for years and you don't even <laughs> yeah. know that. Yeah, exactly. And he just, he pops out like, man, we'll get him next time. It's okay, man. Like, I'm good. 
joke about, you know? And, oh, I love it so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I saw a lot of memes, like, this story just took a dark twist. I was like, yeah, it kind of did. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is, is I do like that, kind of like how you were saying, is that uh, the Pokemon seem to really give it their all this time. Like, or I don't know if all is the right word, but they definitely gave more attention to, like, the details of the story. Um, and, you know, the thing was, it was kind of cool is that we got um, kind of different aspects from it as well, from, you know, Nimona's kind of storyline, which is like, you know, the main Pokemon challenge and things like that. But the multiple champions was kind of interesting. Um, and then, you know, we have the Penny storyline as well. And so it's just kind of fun to kind of have that branched kind of storyline to kind of like almost get to know the characters better. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like I kind of hope they kind of keep that up. And then maybe next time they'll go like actual open world with um like uh what's the right word? Um better graphics. Better graphics and uh but like uh where like you could go to the last gym and it's not like super strong but uh you know it, it'll it'll it's scaling. Yeah. Yeah. scaling. There yeah. you go. Scaling levels. I would love I that. I think that would be amazing cuz then we could like anybody could you know the story the, the journey of everybody would be very different like it would just be, you know, you learn. And that's it'll make it so unique to pro- every person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, to me, I, it shouldn't be that difficult to program or do to like build out a team for depending on like you know within whatever amount of levels your team is at. Because so I mean, another ROM hack we're playing right now is it's Emerald Rogue, and mm-hmm. um, Emerald Rogue the the boss like the gyms you fight are are randomized. So like you can fight like for example you can you know you can fight uh watson as your first gym leader or he can be your eighth one but depending on where you fight him he has a completely different team so i imagine that if you know rom hackers can do that i don't know why the official yeah. pokemon company couldn't do that depending on oh. where a player is at but anyways um yeah i know i totally agree speaking of speaking of this uh dlc um one of the biggest criticisms that the game got was how weak the new legendary pokemon were the you know the three the trio the Fezzendipity, Monkey Dory, and Okie Dokie. I'm just kind of curious, you know, what were your thoughts on them and what your, you know, the power levels and, and if, if you kind of agree with that criticism? Well, before I come to probably why they've made those Pokemon like that, I just got to say, that's some of the most awful Pokemon I've seen <laughs> for a while. Talk about living up to their name. Like, God damn, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, uh, they really lived up to their name. Like, that is awful. Like, they try to make it out like these are the big, bad Pokemon. No, they're bad competitively, too. Yeah, like, I don't so know bad. why. Like, come I don't on. know why. It's so random. They're well, awful. Like, I had, like, Monkey Door. I really wanted Pheasant Dipty because a lot of people weren't talking about it. It was always the Pokemon that people don't talk about that they're actually OP. I'm like, man, I'm really kind of curious that Pheasant Dipty yeah, like, has I like Pheasant Dipty's design, too. Man, that's actually the one that's good design. I yeah. love it. And then we we come to its stats and its move. Who designed this Pokemon? <laughs> and like, what's come on? Oh, man. 90, 90 attack in this day and age after all this power. I know. Yeah. Really? Like, I, and, then, and then we got Mr. Flat Stanley himself, Monkey Dory. Like, <laughs> man, come on, bro. Like, wh- what is going on with him? He has no coverage moves. He's you just sucker punch him away and he's gone off the face of yeah. the planet. Like, I, I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> And then we got a chunky boy, Okie Doggy. Okie Doggy. Well, I mean, listen. Out of the three, I honestly think he's probably like, the most viable, the best, okay. in my opinion. Only be- well, maybe not the best, but like probably the most viable because he has the most move pool. His move pool is great. His abilities mm-hmm. are great. His attack power is actually not that bad. His typing is well. It's the same. I think. What is it? Poison. Like I'm sorry. Poison fighting. It's the same as Sneezer. So obviously it wasn't going to compete in OU mm-hmm. at the time, but. You know, 85 base speed, well, like 120 attack yeah. around there. It's doable. It's fine. It's okay. Nothing especially, like, good, but it's fine. Now, to be honest, what the reason I think these Pokemon are mostly designed is probably because there might be, they're probably, I think Pokemon, what they're trying to do, at least from what I've seen from this generation, they're trying to aim for more VGC, like, audience. Yeah. So I think from their aspect, for yeah. example, Pheasant Dipity, it's supposed to be a bulky Pokemon that can dish it poison damage on anything it uses. For example, like Icy Wind. I know people use Icy Wind a lot, right? So it could use Icy Wind and then really, like, t- not only slow the opponents, but also maybe potentially, like, poison them. Yeah. I believe it gets Icy Wind or some of that effect. Air Slash and, like, stuff like it, that. It so I think it's supposed too. to be more of that kind of, like, Heat, yeah, heat wave. So I think it was supposed to be that's kind of chip damage, chip damage, bulky Pokemon that really sits in there. Really is annoying. I think that's the gen- the direction they're trying to go with the festivity. Right. Monkey Dog, Monkey Dory. I can't tell you what they're doing with that Pokemon. <laughs> that flat Stanley needs to get out of this. <laughs> and Okie Doggy. I well, you know, I don't know. I don't know either. So to be honest, I think these are some of the most poor design legendaries. Like 
I re- I was hoping for so much. Like I just wanted more ogre pawns. Like just spawn more of them. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah this ogre pawn is ridiculous. I was yeah. I was honestly thinking it was going to be more like I kind of like it was almost like a new region. So like you got a new starter or something like that. Like that could be kind of interesting. Like if they did that in the DLC, like they gave you this new Pokemon like Fensidipity or whatever. Like you could choose like if it was a starter, and then you can't access your box until like a certain point. Like I think that'd be kind of cool in dlcs I, that's what i thought they were doing but it wasn't it wasn't meant to be that way unfortunately uh, it, you know the pokemon's usually known as the cost cu- cost cutting company so, you know, as long as they get the money yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um exactly. well we have, we have a couple more questions for you um on your content before we hop into like a rapid fire round and stuff like that and uh moving on from from Monkey Dory, Ooh. aka Mojo Jojo, from the Powerpuff Girls, um, <laughs> you know, we, we were kind of we were kind of talking about this before, but like you know, singles versus VGC and how that's so it, dude, I, I mean, that, that's how I see. I I can't get that uh, out of my my mind Mojo, whenever Jojo. I see Monkey Dory. <laughs> dude, I thought it was just flat Stanley. It looks so flat, bro. But um, you know, it, it's cool because we talked some VGC guys, and we're we're a little greener on on VGC as far as you know, like it's a completely different game, right? It's it's totally different. The strategies are different. The Pokemon right. are viable or different different moves are used, so on and so forth. Um, whereas we have a lot more background in singles as do you, obviously. So, you know, often singles gets criticized as more of a one dimensional game, right? A little easier. It's, it's longer. It's, it's, it's not as fast paced. Um, just give us your unfiltered thoughts on that, you know, uh, on why you love singles, why you think it's uh, it's so enjoyable to you and why uh, maybe give a sales pitch to those listening as to why they should go for singles. Um, well, okay. Well, to begin with, I don't think VGC is, I, I don't think VGC is even that awful. Right. I just think 2v2, the Pokemon that you use, I know people say you, well, you use different moves and different stuff like that. Yeah. Well, come on. It kind of gets a bit repetitive in my yeah. opinion. That is. Um, but for singles for, in, in my opinion, when we play singles, singles, every Pokemon, like there is so many moves move sets pokemon that could be viable people say oh well you know you you pokemon are you pokemon well, those are still viable in yeah. ou it's not like they're not it's just you don't prefer to mm-hmm. use them in ou because they're compared to the rest of the pack they're not mm-hmm. as viable like the like and rock and tyran tar like i know that was popular even gen 7 gen 8 right like yeah it, like and rock was never in ou but and by any stretch of imagination but it was a combination you could use and i think singles every pokemon they could be used and so it's just you can use them in so many ways. There's so many various strategies. You got hyper offense, rain teams, sun teams, sand teams. You got bulky stall. You got balance teams. And singles, in my opinion, you see po- these matches being drawn out mm-hmm. so much. Not to say VGC has no strategy. If anything, you might argue VGC yeah. has no strategy. And I'm not going to dispute yeah. that because it can go both ways. But singles, there is so much strategy, and every move is so meticulously calculated to ensure you're always thinking five steps ahead, six steps ahead. You just, because you want to make sure, okay, well, I'm going to start with Stealth Rock Zion. He's probably going to switch into his Defogger, but I'm going to switch into Gold Dangle. But what if I switch into Gold Dangle? He's going to switch out to something else that counters yeah. Gold Dangle, right? So you're you're manipulating in a way where you find the middle ground for every single turn so you're not, like, overwhelmed. And then at some point, you overtake the opponent when he's not expecting it. And I think that kind of satisfaction, it leads to more, like, satisfying and more, like, mind thinking yeah. behind it. I know there's more calculations, there's more tournaments, there's more support for VGC, and I'm not here to, to by any means, disregard VGC, but I think singles in that aspect, it it offers a, a more, like, com- like in that kind of aspect, more complex strategy, and there's so many more EV and IV options, and now you can say, like, Trick Room is, like, not viable, and, like, mm. things like that, but I think you also have to remember, that's not its fault that Game Freak designed it to have four turns, and you can't really blame them for that, and, I mean, Game Freak could fix something that, or you know, maybe you have, I don't know if there's an item that extends trick room. I don't think so, right? But so. um, terrain extender should do that. I think, like, yeah, singles. Yeah, I I honestly agree. I think singles just offers so much more to every Pokemon that I think VGC does, and it's honestly a bit more interesting. And you have more items that are viable. There's just you know, you feel a lot more heavy stakes. You feel like you're in the anime, yeah. basically, and that that feeling never gets yeah. old. I, so. yeah. I think, um, kind of to your point, one of the things that I, I I was talking with my brother today, as you know, we were I was telling him, you know, we we're gonna have you on and things, and and I was talking to him about this question I was gonna ask you that we were gonna ask you, and I think he he had made a really good comparison is that it's kind of a faulty logic sometimes to say that's an easier game. Um, when it's just it's really two different games like so it's like if it's kind of like comparing chess right. and checkers like mm-hmm. it's like maybe maybe one has mm-hmm. like technically more moves or more strategy uh, not strategy but like more pieces that can do more things or, or things like that right like chess is often seen as seen as like much more difficult than checkers but there's a competitive scene for both and both have their specific strats ways of thinking ways yeah. of actually learning how to play the game well 
Uh, yeah. we, we had um we had a friend come on a couple weeks ago. His name is Team Cap, and he he brought up a really interesting point that I think applies with this logic as well. Is that a lot of times like really good um, singles players will come to he he does monotype draft leagues, and he was saying in there that you know that people come to monotype and you know the really good singles players in general, but learning monotype they they actually don't do as well in the, in the draft league as a monotype player because it's it's a totally different ball game and yeah. i think that's kind of the, the same thing as i just think that both spheres kind of have their niches and and i definitely think that a singles is a blast i you know i definitely would love to like kind of look into vgc more and kind of get more of that graph down but i definitely think mm-hmm. it's a faulty logic to say that one's easier than the other you know yeah yeah exactly and like Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say the same thing. Like we, we weren't, uh, you know, we did, like you said, we weren't pretending to say like one's better than the other or one is worse than the other or whatever. Um, Cause uh, you know, we, we've had on a couple of big time VGC guys who have placed really highly in mm-hmm. regionals or even gone to worlds and stuff like that. Mad respect and, uh, for them too. And yeah, major respect. It's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's so different. And uh, you know, we, we've just personally had more experience playing that. So we can speak more personally on, on single strats, on meta happenings, things like that. And then these guys come in with their, their VGC stuff and we're just sitting there like, whoa like not like going over our head but like wow (laughs) this is just like an entire almost an entirely different like there's some like you know there's obviously some like general battling principles that are going to bleed through no matter what but um there's a lot of stuff like there's like a venn diagram right there's going to be some overlap but there's also a lot of stuff that's uh um that's going to be unique to each one so i just think as a community we need to stop saying that singles is not is good you know it's like that's the thing i think you came into this choppy with that energy of singles. I loved it. And I, and I loved it. Yeah. I, listen, like, and people say, um, for especially, and also, by the way, people who say, like, I think singles are not actual format. Dude, if Pokemon, for, if Pokemon like, sponsored singles, it would be an actual mm-hmm. format. So I don't want to yeah. do that. It's just their preference because of what markets better to the obvious general audience. Like, an average kid is not going to sit through a 40 minute match of, like, you know, the back and forth stall and then eventually hits and stuff like that. Obviously, that's not going to appeal to people. Um, that's why they do sports they do changes in football for example you can hit the quarterback that much because they want more offense it's the same thing here right you want to keep a shorter game because it's more engaging and it's more it's much faster and stuff like that for tournaments and anyway speaking on vgc people say i see this all the time like there's four pokemon there's so many moves that can go around like that's more thinking for that yeah sure you can see singles it's only like there's only a couple of options you have four moves four moves you can switch out to six pokemon switch out to mm-hmm. six pokemon you don't know with vgc you have four pokemon each has the same thing they can do and sure v- but vgc has less turn of that which means yeah sure you have more you have less turns but more thinking of in mm-hmm. each turn but in singles in my opinion if you're playing a really good singles match you're arguably doing as much if not more thinking at the end of the overall match because this match is gonna be 40 <laughs> minutes long and by the end of this your brain's gonna be fried and you're gonna be either screaming and like in pure agony that you lost or screaming in pure happiness that you just won after you finally like out brain yeah. them you just yeah. big brain them like that like that's also equally yeah, especially sad. like in a two to th- two out of three round or something like that uh, kind of going back to that example with Josh and me in the next round, you, you have that information and limited tools to figure out. You, you have to use your li- limited sp- like tools of the four moves, four moves, six, six Pokemon in the back, right? You have to use your limited states that you have to outsmart the other person. And it, 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 it you have to figure out how you're going to do that. And it happens. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is like, Josh, I remember um, in our match, like I switched out one wrong time and he got me right. Perfect. <laughs> and it, it was just, it was, it was one of those That's things yeah. where, the, with the limited tools that you have, like kind of like in checkers, you don't have as many you know tools to use, but the mm. skill and the strategy is still there. Um, so yeah, it was I cool, man. That. It was cool because I, you know, we like you said, we both had our win con, and it was a matter of who's going to get to the win con first. And it's like we were both. It's like you're you're, you're stiff arming me from getting to my win con, and but you're doing the same to me because I'm like, as long as that thing's alive, then like I only have so many things that can take attacks from like yeah a, a choice specs walking wake yeah, in yeah. the sun. Like basically, it's just so I had a floor. I have a floor just on my team. Like you know, obviously massive special wall, like one fifty special defense or something like that. Like literally, the only thing that could like take consistent hits from this thing. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, not to go too much into that, but yeah, you know, just to go with what you guys are, are saying that, um, you know, it just it just feels like each turn since the, since yeah, there are fewer decisions happening per turn. It just feels like each each click of my of my mouse on showdown just has that much more weight to it, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I mean, there's fewer yeah. of them, right? I. There's much more There's stick. More stick. I only turn. have one mon out. I only get to, I get to switch out or I get to click a move, and that's it. So it's like you know, I just feel like there's a lot more weight, and I'm just really sweating out each decision. And again, not to say that that VGC or doubles guys don't have that same thing, but um, you know. So anyways, course, so yeah. big tangent on that, but we wanted to ask you. So 
That was fun. That was fun. I'm um, kind of getting more into your. Um, this is kind of a funny, uh, awesome thing that I found when I was looking through your Discord, kind of doing research on on you and your your community. Is um, there's this there's this channel in your Discord called Chompy Lore, and it has epic tales of battles oh, of kingship man. with the OU, kind of taking your feats and uh, and your community's kind of built out these epic, deep, almost like Game of Thrones like tales. Like it, just, it was just <laughs> fun to read through. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Um, talk more about kind of like I mean you've had pretty incredible growth this year and you know your channel's been you've been really getting getting speed and kind of talk to me more about like your community and how that's you know that's been kind of fun building a community around the singles scene and kind of what that's meant to you in this journey man um well i said i said i was going to touch upon it or i'll touch upon it now so i created a channel obviously back in 2016 mm-hmm. um it was called sacred ninja at the time and my mascot was yeah. Keldia because it was my favorite pokemon me and my friend used to do soul links back in the day we got some positive comments here and there but you know it wasn't that special so then when i started my channel last year in 2022 um i was like goofing around and then december i got a huge hit on my history yeah. Gudra video it got it just it got 3k views one day i was like okay whatever you know i mean it hit 800 subs i hit 1k eventually and hopefully things will spiral maybe next year i'll hit 5k by the end of this next end of the next year it'll be cool right i'm just goofing around i'm having fun on board this video hit 100k, but it wasn't so much 100k. It was the amount of positive awesome. comments I got. I got. They were all excited. They were like, "Man, this is so cool!" My sub count shot from 800 to 2k Ooh, in your days, and so I started uploading. Yeah, exactly. I started uploading and stuff, and things. I started to be co- uh, start very positive. I saw the same people commenting. They start like I could see fans basically almost. And so then I created a Discord. I think late March around there, and a bunch of people came in. Um, initially, it was like 50 people at one point. At this time, I was like, a, I was still small. I was at like 5K. Not to say I'm big. I'm still small. I have 11K. But like, I, a lot of people came in, and so then it was like a tight knit community because it was only like 50 people at the time that was in the server, and then it obviously grew over mm-hmm. time. Um, but they were my community is honestly amazing because I remember in May, in April, May, I was feeling so much pressure from school, college, getting into college, right. and obviously applying. And obviously school and like all that kind of stuff. And I really needed an editor at this time. And I, I'm still searching for one, by the way, because honestly, me editing all these videos, it's not going to last forever. Eventually, like I, school's getting more tougher as I keep yeah. going through college. I'm only in my freshman year, so it's not it's going to only able up even more. But I remember I was searching for, a, for a, an editor. It took over a month. I didn't get an editor. I got an editor actually for like two videos, but he charged so much money. I could not do it anymore. I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I'll toss it. I didn't really upload it the month of May. I was stagnant around 6.6k subs. And I came back in June. I put my first video, I was about light clay. Because at the time Post Home came out, people were complaining left, right, and center about light clay. And they should ban it because Ursula was so OP with Madeira mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys remember mm-hmm. that. But that was really the talk of the meta back then. And so I just tossed a video out. And this video still got 12k views. Even after a month, I did not upload. And everyone was like, oh my god. Chompy's <laughs> back. He's back uploading and all that kind of stuff. It, I was really yeah. like moved. It was like, oh my God, this community that I've basically been in, almost ignoring for a month because I just thought, man, I don't know if YouTube's for me. It's like, it's so much work. They came back and like uh, my views and everything went back up in June. It was one of my most successful months. I think I hit around 7.7K. Wow. I went to 8K almost. And so like things were back on track my community my server like man we got you like they were they were all there i think this server is awesome like the chompy lore and stuff like what they do man it's so fun and like and honestly like no matter what i see them always supporting me in every video we have a meme like i could obviously have a discord bot and send out every video that i do but i purposely don't because they like having fun of competing to see who can like outsource and like who puts the new video out that i upload first is it me or will it be them (laughs) recently they beat me to it but they have fun doing it, and like ever since like like that time, it's always been like a special moment. Like, man, I really have a special yeah. community, and all these people are special. And like, I honestly like like my editor and my thumbnail artist. Like, even still now, like they still support me. They reached out to me. I didn't even reach out to them. They reached out to me. Like, we want to see you grow and still be mm-hmm. better than ever. And like over the summer, and still now, I have an editor, and well, he works here and there, but he's still my editor. And then my thumbnail artist. Like, he creates these awesome thumbnails. Like, man, I'm so invested in channel growth. I want to see it grow. And obviously, he doesn't make every thumbnail for every video because it's yeah. obviously pricey. But, like, it's he still helps these, like, growth and stuff. And it's honestly amazing. The amount of people that have come up to me to be asked to, like, I want to work for you or like this. I had a guy who wanted to be an editor for me for free. Obviously, he only worked for, like, I think one, one and a half video because he got yeah. busy then afterwards. But he was like, I want to edit for you for free. I think you're going to explode. 
And it was that D- Diago yeah, video yeah. that he edited. And it was absolutely a light yeah, style. Yeah. People love that. I wish I could have more of that same kind of similar editing style. Unfortunately, I'm not that skilled at editing, so I just try whatever I can. But it's like that kind of thing. Like, it's always stuck by to me. I was this close to quitting YouTube back in May. And now looking back on it, I was like, man, I was foolish. Like, I was about to give up on these people who yeah. didn't give up on me. Like, I can't do that no more. So no matter how many K subs I'm at, like, making people happy through my passion of Pokemon is what kept pushing me ever since like that moment. That's so cool, man. That's Congrats. awesome. It's well deserved. That's... And it's like, I mean, the, the, the passion is, is, is very clearly evident. And you know, we, we get it. I mean, you know, you know, being a small channel, there's only so much time and resources you have, even though there's no shortage of passion and knowledge and care for the actual content and franchise itself. It's like, Hey, at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm in college or I have a full-time job or I have a family. I can only put mm-hmm. so much into it for something that doesn't yield a lot of like, you know, tangible return. Of, you know, it feels good. and You have an awesome community, but at the end of the day, yeah. you still, you have limited time. You still got to have, you know, you got to bring something in. And, uh, but you know, yeah, it, it, like I'm just looking at the stuff, like your recent, you know, your recent videos over the last like little bit have been awesome. Thumbnails are great. The content is great. And it's shown like in, in the views as well. I mean, like your, uh, your video yeah. on, um, you know, the, uh, new U- Ubers here uh from uh about a month ago <laughs> that one popped off that's like that a exploded. 70k views right now i'm just looking right now the the dial like i said the, the dialga origin form video is awesome as well so um and i i, I gotta say I, yeah. might, I might disagree with that one but uh, because i'm using i'm using dialga um uh, the the origin form in, in our draft league right now i've actually really enjoyed it but i'm just teasing you i'm just teasing you there <laughs> <laughs> But it's so cool, no, I, dude. And I'm just so happy that, you know, what, like kind of what you're saying that like you mm-hmm. felt the energy from them and they came to you, like they could even came to you to like say, Hey, let's get you up there. And you were like, I, I just love this, to hear the passion that you take and like the care that you take to really make sure that their, their hopes and like their hopes for you and like your dreams are, are just taken, taken in by the, by the reins and, and thrust forward. Yeah. Like I, I just, Exactly. I just got to keep moving forward. And I think also like another thing, um, like I, I remember I was given an opportunity to look a look and work for a college campus job, but I love YouTube. And obviously like you're obviously at some point when you're this deep into YouTube, you're always going to look to monetize right. and yeah, yeah. money. But so like, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do the campus job. Instead now in my focus is I want to grow this channel as fast as possible. And I have limited time to edit. So now I've come to a realization that and I started doing this recently. You guys can check my channel, my shorts and everything, right? I started to upload yeah. a bit more shorts. And my thing is I'm going to upload one video per week and see how things go. If I can spiral this out of control, because shorts is a really good mm-hmm. cheat code to really like uplift your thing. I just never really did it because I valued more edited content for my viewers because I thought that's yep. what they deserved more. And I'm not saying I'm going to cut it back, but I'm going to make it better in the week's events instead of making something that's like haphazard in like a week and a half, like, uh, like a half a week. It's like, okay, you know, it's mm-hmm. something new to talk. It's a new video. I don't know if it's going to do that good. And it's like slow growth, but I want to hit on everything. So like I've made it Instagram, TikTok, yeah. and everything. And so that way, if this like ex- exponential growth, not only do I not have to do a campus job, but then I can potentially, and my hopeful thing, because I, I really cannot do this next year for college, but I finally have an editor, or at least next semester, nice. I have finally have an editor. Um, He can work on the videos that gives me more time to create more shorts by myself, which means more channel growth. And that means more channel growth means more awesome videos, more like, you know, things like that. And like, I like, obviously like that's my goal with this. And like, I'm really pushing forward with this, at least in my freshman year, I really want YouTube to work. It's been so awesome. I love it as this like niche yeah. side hustle. The community is awesome. Like, like everything, like this entire like vibe, this, I never thought I'd be doing this a year. If you told me myself in my senior year of high school around this time, oh, your channel's going to pop up. You're going to be around 11K yeah. subscribers next year. I would never believe There's you because no I was like, man, it is. YouTube is so hard. I just can't do this. That's but... awesome, man. Hey, man. That's, that's so cool. going to keep trying. Nice. Oh, I love it. Um, well, to, we got, we got a couple more things left before we, uh, before we wrap up here, it's been, you know, an absolute pleasure, but we kind of got some fun stuff to end on. We have, like I said, a rapid fire round. Um, as well. So for this rapid fire round, I got, um, you know, we got a list of Pokemon. Um, there are two Pokemon that are relatively in the same tier and just off the hip, tell us who you'd pick, whether it's a combination of, you know, you like the design, you think they're good, whatever the reasoning is, whatever comes to your head, just tell us who you think. So Logan, do you want to alternate on these? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Okay, cool. I'll go first. So, all right, first one I got for you, Iron Moth or Heatran? 
Iron Moth. Ooh, Iron Moth. I like it. I like Soft it. spot for the paradoxes. That's right. You said that. <laughs> next. Yeah, and also it's, it's good. Yeah, yeah, I got better. It's good. All right. Next up is Gliscor or Blissey. Ooh, I'm gonna have to go Gliscor. Okay. Sure. okay. Fair. Next up, Empoleon or Hisuian Arcanine. Hisuian Arcanine. Yeah. Hisuian Did you say Arcanine. Hisuian Arcanine? Uh, I'm gonna go. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Empoleon. I gotta show love to yeah. old Gen Four. Yeah, I like it. Both. I like it. Manaphy or Ogrepan Wellspring. Ogrepan Wellspring. Ten <laughs> times, seven days a week, twice a Sunday. It, it's so good. It really is so good. Um, it's so good. Yusui and Samurai or Ursaluna Blood Moon. <laughs> Man, what kind of question is that? I, know, Blood I, Moon or I just wanted to hear you <laughs> say it. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> All right, and lastly, Rombi or Toxapex. Man, Toxpex sucks. Give me the bomb, bro. Give me those sticky Give me that speed control and call it a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toxpex I know. Fall it's so crazy how yeah, it's just falling off. I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know how long since, you know, last gen. No one cares. It's only an OU because yeah, of the I mean, straight up. Awesome. Well, right. um, yeah, we're going to move into our, our shower thoughts section. So, mm-hmm. Logan, so you're this up. is kind of just kind of a, like... You know, fun thoughts about the Pokemon universe, you know, also in real life, like just like what ifs that could happen um, even in, you know. So, like, for example, our first one right now is going to be, you know, we, we if if Pokemon were to actually make singles an official competitive, you know, division to look at, you know, and to actually be a thing. What do you, what do you think would that that would look like, you know, on like the world sphere on like if there were regional tournaments like, you know, that had. BGC, singles, go, you know, all that stuff, all unite, everything. I'm just kind of curious, like, you know, what would that look like to you? And, uh, what do you like, would you like that to happen? I, listen, man, if they can make 6v6 singles happen, I'm all in for it. The only problem is, um, we're in the generation where eight second it's attention true. span is a thing. And like after eight seconds, if they don't see some cool moves, like they're just going to not be attending, especially for little kids these days with their <laughs> iPads and everything, which is, you know, so I don't know how like good that is. And also too, like I think they'll make it three V three and like, Hey man, I'm not in for a three V three. So that's just boring, bro. Like, like, uh, man, like nah. So me personally, like I would love it, but I know it's never going to yeah, happen. Because of those reasons. That's fair. That'd be so cool. Though. All right. I'd next one that. we got for you. Um, so let's say you're so obviously you're in college now, but let's say you're in college in the Pokemon universe and you need to write a paper on a specific Pokemon evolution line. Which line are you choosing? Which line am I choosing? I think um Okay, well I got two. So the first one up I think would be Cosmog oh, into Bogu nice. Nala yeah. and Solgaleo. I think that's such a cool, like, how the evolution phenomenon, like, just riding on something like that, how it goes and it could potentially go into two different forms. I think that would be sick. How this little ball, it just evolves yeah. in that, that would be cool. I think also another one, like, I don't, this is not really an evolution, but, like, the evolution of how Coridon or Maridon went down oh, to yeah. Cyber. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, it just devolved, like, or evolved. That's into, like, I think that would yeah, be cool. I like, that. Well. I like it. I like that a lot. All right, and then lastly, if you um like you can make a Pokemon ability, like it's gonna be balanced, like just a regular kind of ability. But it, you know, what would you make? What would be your personal custom ability that you would add into the Pokemon games? Mm-hmm. Personal custom ability, man. I think I want an ability where <laughs> where we make. Uh, maybe some electro type Pokemon gets it, maybe Electivire, but their electro type moves get powered up by 1.5 times. And I also want uh, the ability of Spectres to be yeah, mass okay. produced even more. Like special type Moxie boost and a way to power up electro type moves. Like, come on, man. The only electro type physical move that's like not that bad or like decent is like Bolt Tackle, and then you got yeah. like Thunder Punch or right, you got right. like Wild Charge. Like, when you compare it to, like, other things, like, that's just awful. Like, Thunder, Electric is literally a special type coverage mm-hmm. move. Like, that's it. Electrify is awful because it doesn't have anything like that, not to mention a myriad of other problems. But, like, you know, like, Luxray, like, and, like, there's certain things, like, I wish, like, we could have something. So, just having maybe Electric type multiplier, if they're not going to give us more moves that are viable, at least do that. Awesome. Like, that would be cool. And I think also another ability that would be cool is, like, um, an ability that's, like, uh, it's, like, uh, if a Pokemon is like flying and it doesn't have, I, not levitate, but I don't know, maybe like a mix of like levitate and like Ooh. mold breaker. I don't know. So, like a mix of abilities that they do. This, I, like, they've been mixing abilities lately, like Blood Moon or yeah. those abilities, like Mind, Mind's Eye, and that's basically a mix of abilities yeah, right. like Keen Eye or like something else. I forgot what it was, but 
So I think just mixing more abilities, honestly, would be pretty cool. Even though it's not that like innovative, it's still innovative. Yeah, I like that. That'd be kind of cool. It's fun. That's awesome. Sweet man. Well, again, we uh, we we really appreciate it. This was an absolute blast and, and treat to talk with you. Um, you know, like I said, Logan and I were chatting over the the ensuing days ever since we we got in contact with you, and we're like, yeah, this is a this will be fun because this is you know right up our alley as far as our personal experience. So I know it'd be it'd be fun to get some more insights from someone who's just been killing it and clearly has a has a huge breadth of knowledge about the subject. So we yeah we wanted to heap the praise on you that, again. Yeah. And it's been a pleasure to see your channel grow. Um, so before we sign off here, um, if there's anything you want to plug as far as, you know, videos or content you got coming up for the people, uh, plug that and then maybe leave us with some uh, some nuggets of wisdom, whether it's about Pokemon, running a YouTube channel, life in general, um, leave the people with some wisdom and we'll uh, we'll sign off on that. I'm going to start off with the wisdom first. I think um, don't betray people's hope. I think that's very important. Like it's, it feels good well when you fulfill it um, and never give up because hey man, you guys will probably be here one day. If you guys are all striving YouTubers, that'll definitely happen. Especially I hope your guys' podcast also blows Thanks, up. Man. That'd be amazing Thanks, as well for the Pokemon community. And so um, as for messages, um, don't subscribe to me. <laughs> subscribe to these guys. They're making awesome podcasts. And there we want more awesome podcast content just there like this. Go, so man. subscribe them. Oh, Sus- thanks, subscribe bro. to them. I love it. I love it. Well, that leaves me room to say subscribe to Chompy and, uh, and stay tuned in for him. So we'll, we'll, we'll dish that back <laughs> to you. Um, but again, it's been a treat. We'll plug everything in our description as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll plug your uh, um, your socials, of course, your YouTube. Um, highly encourage everyone to go ahead and, uh, and check out Chompy's content. Subscribe to him. Like to him. He's you know, pumping out some great stuff. Of course, like and subscribe with us. Logan and I, in addition to more uh, podcasts, we are going to be doing some other types of videos and content as well. Um, don't want to tease too much because it's going to be something fun that we're actually going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. Just some kind of, you know, stuff to spice up the usual things that we're doing. So keep an eye out for that. Follow us, subscribe to us. And until next time, this is Josh, Logan, and Chompy with Skill Link signing out. See you guys. See you guys.